Well, good evening and thanks for joining us tonight here on News 20 on GTN. We've got a great show for you tonight, very informative and educational. And joining me to my right, we have Don Young, a longtime volunteer for the American Cancer Society. We've known each other a long time. It's been 14 years or so since we've actually seen each other. It's been a while since we did relate to life together. You know, maybe it doesn't, when they have their babies or some place, you know, don't sure. And of course, your beautiful wife, Kay, next to you. Glad you could join us here on the show. We appreciate your time also. Glad to do it. All right, Don, let's talk about, um, well, we've got 14 years of catching up to uh, do here on the show today. What, what have you been up to in that, in that time span with the Cancer Society? Oh, guys, well, we, you know, of course, we volunteer and drive, you know, for, you know, well through recovery, uh, which we enjoy doing that, you know, for patients who they really need. You know, the transportation. Let's take a step back for the people who might not have seen us on the show before or who have not heard your story. Kind of walk us through your life and how you got to where you are now. I'm glad to. I had cancer. Obviously, you talk to them. You said, I'm glad you're learning to speak with. And uh, that was the 22 years now, believe it or not, because I started my surgery with my bowel with cancer and recovery and going through, you know, the recuperation and doing different things. And uh, about maybe 1993, 94, when I started feeling better, and then we started volunteering. I did start volunteer with the Cancer Society. They had a local office out in St. Charles, which we didn't know about at the time. And, uh, you know, food celebrity from. My wife uh, got acquainted with the people in the office with the ACS, and then we started volunteering to do different things, and then uh, we started driving patients when we were asked to volunteer to do this, which is good, because you can do it on your own time, but you don't have to do it every day. Uh, a lot of people are misunderstanding about volunteering to do the road recovery, because they think, well, I've got to do it every day, but you don't have to do it every day, you do it when you're available. Uh, patients really get a good, uh, you know, uh, understanding of, you know, I do with them. I didn't understand a lot about the road recovery at the beginning. My wife's been doing it since 1976 or so, and I started volunteering, you know, like 20-something years ago, so it was fine. And so, Kay, walk us through your experience. It, it's, when you throw out your individual names in the community, Everybody knows who you guys are. What's it been like to be out there with Don, talking to people, and, and really changing people's lives? Well, I personally had a reason for doing this. My mother died when, she, when I was 18 of cancer, and I moved to Missouri, and uh, my son was little, and I had seen a notice in a paper about driving for the Cancer Society, and so I... Um, signed up and that was back 40, no, 39 years ago. And I've done that off and on and we've been involved with the Cancer Society through just a, um, I feel like there's a cure out there someplace and we can just keep raising that money and helping people that. We've talked over the last couple of weeks here on the show a lot about the Relay for Life, the new format of the Relay for Life that's gonna be coming up this year. I know you guys have been very active in the Relay for Life. Uh, Kate, what's it like for you when you guys go out and speak? Don speaks and you see the reaction of the kids, you see the reaction of adults to uh, Don's positive demeanor through what he's gone through? Don has always been positive. He's a um, cancer survivor right from the beginning. They gave him six months to live back 23 years ago. So he's got a powerful story to tell, and it was all because of smoking, the cancer. So he took that and um, made it positive. And we have a, he has a lot of feedback from doing assemblies at schools and all feedback from the children that he'll see out in the store and they say, I don't smoke because of you or different ones have quit. And I feel like that has um, prolonged the life of a lot of people. And Don, yourself, talk to us about that same experience. When you see children out in an audience and they come up and they give you a, a response, is that you've really made a difference in a lot of people's lives? Yeah, yeah Randy, we really enjoy seeing people that we've talked to over the years. Some people now cannot 
college and got jobs and got families and somebody says I'm probably you know that's like oh Mr. Young, Mr. Young he said I remember you when you came to my school years ago and a college and you know, high school and colleges we go to and uh talk to young people. They said, Well yeah, you really impacted our lives and then we started, you know, we do site in Kansas Center downtown. Uh, you know, for uh, we go and volunteer there and do smoke prevention program for the employees at Florence Hospital. But then my wife and I started visiting patients personally. We didn't really get a, you know, feedback from them. But, uh, you know, when you see patients going through the same surgery, and I try to encourage them to get on with their life because just because you're, you're diagnosed with cancer, it doesn't mean you're going to die. There's got a lot of you know, treatments out there. You know, people going through chemotherapy, people going through radiation, and different things, you know, and it affects their life. And then I try to follow up with them when they go home. You know, I mean, I do visit some people going home, you know, patients, and try to encourage them to get on with their life. And, and I've been through different kinds kind of situations, really, about recovery from going through cancer and radiation things and I try to impact them in the sense of to when I get on with your life because you might go to you and you're gonna die. There's you know a lot of different cures out there and uh, we've seen a lot of people unfortunately some of them have died but I mean some of them survive it and then we try to get them to go on with their life and you know and the good thing about being a survivor is you can volunteer you now with the ACS and our maybe encourage other people to go on with their life also. Looking at some of the stats and the feedback from the American Cancer Society, they say that transportation is only second to direct financial mm -hmm. need and the concerns of a cancer patient and their family. Talk to us about the, the transportation part of this issue. We were fortunate. Don went through um, radiation, not chemo, and I was I was blessed with a job that I could leave and take him if I needed to a doctor's appointment. And he was able to drive himself to radiation. <clears throat> but if he was not, I don't know, there's people, I don't know how they could do it. They've got it. When cancer hits, you haven't got just the disease to fight, you've got financial problems and um, just the logistics of it all. And just to have that taken off your mind of somebody going to drive or help out that way is a big load. How can someone out there watching tonight in terms of transportation and just being an overall volunteer, they're not sure where they will fit in or what they'll do. Uh, how do they make that first step and what kind of rewarding experience is it? Oh, they just need to call the Cancer Society. They'll plug, plug them in someplace mm -hmm. there. But um, actually when we drive, you're doing it to help other people, and they really, they, oh, they so appreciate it. But I think the biggest blessing, I get the blessing in return. It's to know that it's rewarding, yeah, it's very rewarding. rewarding. For us to be able to help somebody, you know, recover, to, you know, carry on. Because uh, a lot of people don't have family. People can't take off of work a lot of times. You know, these people need a ride, you know, back and forth, them from their treatment, their, their treatment back. And family can't always be there, I and mean, that's what we kind of fill in. You talked a little bit earlier about you, the cancer being beatable in this day and age. Through all your years of speaking back from when I first met you guys like 20 years ago to now, has your message changed to folks that you talk to in terms of what you deliver and how you deliver it? Um, yeah, I think so because of the, the treatment uh, has changed so much over the years and a lot more people, I believe, are surviving their cancer and they're going on with their lives and they really need to understand that, you know, it's, like I said earlier, you, just because you're diagnosed with cancer it doesn't mean you're going to die or end either. You know, there's a lot of uh, recovery people now. You look at the stats and they're almost phenomenal when you look in your lifetime of uh, the chances of having cancer and just in your immediate circle of your family mm. uh, and, and friends, the numbers are astounding these days. And I know when we used to have all the different relays, the word hope would always be a very mm. prominent sign, whether it was with the luminaries or it was part of the speaking. Is that something that you talk to a lot of the individuals about, is that hope is the one thing that, is, that you have? 
Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just gonna say, you know, when you go to these places every year, you know, you save for life, and then and you see people you see seen last year, or year before that, or five years ago, or ten years ago, when they were back there walking the track, you know, you live for life, and things, you know, it just, I mean, it gives you an insight I can't explain. It gives you someone to yell, and, you know, congratulate you, pay that you pay that you're back again each year, you know, it just, I mean, it just gives you a little bit, it gives you a Go on and fight through your cancer. Okay, we talked a lot over the past month or so. I've had several different individuals on the show. And the one thing that everybody points to as a major success in them overcoming what they went through is not just the word hope, but the whole um, reliance on knowing that you're going to beat it. The mindset of this isn't going to beat me, I'm going to beat it through your two experiences, um, is that something that can either mm -hmm. propel you to beat it or defeat you? I think a positive attitude has a lot to do with it and the support of your family. Um, I think we all know somebody that has been touched by cancer and um, just to be able to give them the hope to keep going on you know, and like I said, I'm, I'm a positive person and really believe, you know, and over the, over the years, you know, I started doing the, uh, the senior Olympics and doing things and showing people when we do our programs, you got to show a picture of me standing there with some medals that I won from, you know, doing the senior games, you know, and things and that. And you're competing against, you know, other people your age, but they you know, Don, you know, they look at you and say, well, you beat it, you carry them the torches, and this kind of thing inspires them to go on with their life, and, you know, it really does help them. You know, I see people like my wife and I, you know, out there helping and doing things for people that's had cancer and, I think that's the, the thing we want to get people is hope to go along with their lives, really. And as we start to wrap this segment up, Kay, I'll start with you. What would you say to everybody out there about uh, getting involved, whether you're directly affected by cancer or not? The little bit of time that you can give, whether it's an hour a week or an hour a month, it doesn't really matter. Everything makes a difference. And to come to an event like uh, the Relay for Life, even if you're just a spectator and be part of it and absorb everything that goes on within the community and how it affects the community, what would you say to those people? Um, get off the I, couch for one and get down. Yeah, right? get moving. But I think, like I said before, you receive the blessing out of it. That even by driving, if you just give maybe just an hour a month, anything, it may be that one hour that patient hasn't got a ride. And that means them getting a treatment or not getting a treatment. And we'll put up at the end of the show here all the numbers that you can call to find out more information about becoming a volunteer as Kay and Don are talking about simply things that a lot of people overlook like the transportation mm -hmm. back and forth to the doctor, to a visit, to wherever can make the difference in making it or not making it. Don, as we wrap things up, I'm going to leave the floor to you. What do you say to everybody out there about um, you know, becoming part of this great cause? I think, you know, you need to get back to your community or to your, to your other people, you know, and just, you know, when you're laying in that bed, you're going through the cancer and you're having surgery or something, you know, in the hospital there, and just everybody care, really care, and you're laying there, you don't know if you're going to survive and, you know, beat the cancer, you know, you really don't, and, and there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of uh, disappointment that you've got the cancer, and it's not always your fault, but, you know, you've been uh, diagnosed with it. Uh, what I mean by that is you don't need it cause your cancer just because you've done something in your life. You know, you feel like, well, I smoke, and I get myself this well. It's not always a down, it's an up thing to you. Now that you beat it, you need to realize there are people do that um, because I beat this cancer, other people can't do. Well, guys, we appreciate your time and being um, very open with us. Over the last 20 years, you've changed a lot of lives, continued success, and uh, we'll, we'll have you on multiple times before the next 20 years, I promise. Yeah, well, so thank you, Randy, and uh, my wife, and I, you know, we've done schools and college, and, then I, and we've all go to water with me and kids already, and I might not have stopped them all from smoking, you know, but I hope uh, you know, we get too much good feedback, and so it's worth doing. Great, guys. We appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Stay with us. Much more next year on News 20. 
Support the Red Cross and change a life, starting with your own. And welcome back to News 20 here on GTN. I'm Randy Gardner. As we mentioned, we have a great show for you tonight. Very informative and educational. And joining me to my right, we have Katie Wren, account representative um, with the hospital systems. Glad you could join us. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. And to your right, we have Ray Koopman. Glad you could join us here also. Thank you. And um, let's start. We'll start off with you, Ray. Tell us a little bit about your involvement with the Cancer Society and the Relay for Life. Um, so I have actually, I've been familiar with American Cancer Society all of my life. Um, cancer has touched me very personally, both my parents, um, but then I was lucky enough to actually turn my passion into my career three years ago when I started with American Cancer Society. Um, I work with Relay for Life, the world's largest fundraiser against cancer. Um, I staff five events currently, and two of which are in St. Charles. When you look at what you do for a job, a lot of people like myself, uh, give time out of their their schedule, busy schedule, to come out and be part of it. What would you say to people about donating that, donating that time? Whether it's an hour, whether it's an hour a week, an hour a month, it all makes a big difference. It certainly does. And when you volunteer for a Relay for Life committee or a team captain, um, to be a team captain with one of our events, it really is an hour or two a month that we ask of your time. The leadership team includes myself and a chairperson. We meet once a month with the team captains and the committees, and it really it, it, it adds up over the course of several months as we congregate again and people share their ideas and network. And um, it, it does, it just all it comes to fruition at the final relay event, and it's huge. I mean, the amount of money we hope to raise in St. Charles one day will be six figures. We would love that. So it does, it, it adds up to be a great, great deal. And we'll talk about that event and the event leading up to the big event in downtown St. Charles. But Katie, um, talk to us about some of the patient services that are available to uh, individuals out there who have been diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, so we have a bunch of different programs and services. Actually, part of my job is making sure that all the cancer centers in the St. Louis area um, are referring their patients to these programs. So we have programs anywhere from just a 1-800 number where patients can get information about their treatment or clinical trials, all the way up to transportation and lodging for patients who wouldn't otherwise be able to get the treatment that they're receiving here in St. Louis. Before we went on camera, we talked about uh, the station here being involved with the Relay for Life and the Cancer Society for almost 20 years now. And the reoccurring theme of everybody that I interview through all the years, including the last two or three weeks here on the show, is that the Cancer Society has gave them a wealth of information that when there was no place else or they didn't know who to turn to, they could always pick up that phone and make yes. a call. What do you say about that kind of feedback about your organization? It's amazing. I mean, it makes me really proud to work for the American Cancer Society because, I mean, there's a lot of organizations out there who do provide services, but the range of services that we provide and the fact that we're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week is huge. Um, and our information is based on actual research that we can fund through fundraisers like the Relay for Life. Um, and so it just, it makes me really proud. And I think it's super important for people to know that we are here, um, either through our website, cancer.org or our 1-800 number. Every minute of the day, somewhere in this country, someone's <clears throat> gonna be diagnosed with cancer. Yes. What, what's their first step? I know it's a very scary proposition. We've gone through it a couple of times um, in my family. It's been very scary. What do you say to an individual who hears that news doesn't know what to do. That first phone call is always the hardest. Yeah, and I think um, what I always tell people is cancer has changed so much over the years. I mean, it's not a death sentence anymore. Um, and a lot of that has to do with research that's being done. Um, but I think the first phone call should be to the American Cancer Society. We have medical professionals on site. We have, like I said, the latest research about treatment options and clinical trials. So. Um, and they can help you get in touch with not only our programs and services, but any other program and service that's out there from national or local resources. And we can put in somebody's zip code and pull up where support groups are, um, where other transportation services are, where financial services are. So um, yeah, the 1-800 number would be the absolute first place that I would turn to. 
Ray, let's turn our focus back to the Relay for Life for a few moments. When you look at all the relays across the entire metro area here and what they do and how many people come to each one of those, in the St. Louis area, there's going to be one big one this year, which yes. is a new concept. Um, on the St. Charles side of the river, there's still going to be several different ones. Yes. Walk us through that. Um, so there are, again, um, of my st five events that I staff, three of which are in rural areas, I do still have Greater St. Charles, which really encompasses um, St. Peter's, O'Fallon, Cottleville, and downtown St. Charles. And then I also staff Western St. Charles, which really is Darden Prairie, Lake St. Louis, and Wentzville. And they are two similar events, but also very different. Western St. Charles is very youth driven. Um, we have a lot of uh, support from the local high schools and the Wentzville School District is wonderful. And Greater St. Charles is very community driven and commercially driven too. We have a great deal of sponsorship. We're actually going to be in the Cottleville St. Patrick's Day Parade on March 14th. Um, Relay is going to have a big float, so come out and check us out. Um, it's, it's really the amount of potential. St. Charles is doing wonderful things, but the amount of potential still to gain more awareness and to reach more people is vast. I mean, it's such a wonderful community. And all those events are going to focus over and all those people hopefully will be driven downtown to the big one in St. Louis. It's a very unique idea, very different. Everything we've heard so far has been very positive about it. Absolutely. The, the, um, the Relay for Life of St. Louis will be on um, Saturday, May 30th. And um, I think that it will be, it will really very well represent all the walks of life within St. Louis and it's downtown. I know there's a baseball game that night so there'll be a lot of people wearing their red and their cardinal red but a lot of people in their purple too so to represent survivorship and relay um, I think it will do wonderful things and it, it does it will finally do justice to what St. Louis has to offer as a downtown community and all the suburban areas that will come in and support it. Um, I think it will do wonderful things for awareness. What would you say to somebody who has never been to one of these events? They have to be living under a rock if they haven't <laughs> heard about it. But, you know, I, I know a lot of people who haven't been to one. And as I told you before, the first one I went to, I left there saying anything I can do for the rest of my life, I will be part of it. And I think a lot of people have that same attribute once they go to one of these and see <clears throat> How many people are affected by this and how emotional that night is it really is um, i always look at it as it's, it is a celebration we um, it basically really does three things we celebrate our survivors we remember our fallen heroes and then at the end of the night we take a pledge to fight back all over again the following year until there's a cure um, as much fun and it is very lighthearted, and it really is a celebration of people that really they're strangers when you walk into relay and they're friends when you leave um, there are definitely some very um, somber moments and it, it really it's a great grieving process while also I mean it's it's having fun while fighting while fighting the fight and when raising money um, and it really puts cancer again as Katie to echo what she said cancer is not something that really when you hear the words you have cancer that doesn't mean that it's a death sentence anymore. It really just means that I'm going to come out of this a stronger person than I was before. And American Cancer Society, Relay for Life, all of our programs and services can help you and your family members get through that hard time. Relay for Life, I always think of it just as a big festival for the fight. And it, it really, it changed me for the first time when I went. It, it, it's, and I'm the product of two cancer patients. So um, I think that it's a very healing process and it's, it's definitely very memorable, so. And Katie, you work with a lot of individuals, as you mentioned, who are going through this. Um, how important is the word hope? And we talk about a cure and being positive because everybody I've had over the last year who, had, who has sat here said, I made it through this because my family supported me and I had the right mindset. Yeah. People either per se shrivel up and kind of go in their hole and it overtakes them or they stand up and they're proud and they say, I'm going to beat this. How important is that? I think that's 99.9% .9 of the fight. I mean, science is part of that um, and you know, your treatment center and the nurses and everything, but hope is all that you have. And I've met so many people that said, if I didn't have hope, I wouldn't be here today. And like you said, that comes from not only internally, but your support system around you. And Relay for Life is just one of those events that if you don't have a support system or if you're looking for some sort of hope, come to one of these events and I guarantee you'll leave with some sort of 
strength within you. What's been the feedback of um, individuals that you've talked to who see these patient services, realize how much they provide back to them, and they realize that they're not alone. There's thousands of people going through the exact same thing they are. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, one of our programs, Look Good, Feel Better, is a program for women, um, and I call it a practical support group because you get women in one room, and part of that support is being around other women who are going through something similar. And the change that I see from women entering the room to leaving, night and day. I mean, just the fact of sitting there talking about their experiences changes their persona when they leave. And they not only look different physically because the makeup and all the great things that our cosmetologists do, but I've seen women exchange phone numbers. They go out to lunch afterwards. I mean, it's, it's incredible. The one thing we really want to stress here on the show today is getting involved in the community, getting involved in the Relay for Life, and donating time to the American Cancer Society. And as we wrap things up, I know how good I feel after I go to an event, after I'm part of something, uh, helping out. You guys do this for a living. This is your job. How great does it make you feel to know that you're doing something that really changes a lot of people's lives on a daily basis? It's great. I mean, you have those days sometimes where you go home and you're frustrated, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't be able to do a job where I couldn't make a difference in somebody's life. And so I try to go to as many relays as possible because it brings me back to our mission. And yourself? Um, I, I must say I was very lucky to have found this job to not only be a passion, but a career. And um, again, just... <clears throat> excuse me, being someone that cancer has touched my life so closely, um, it's really a great way that American Cancer Society has given me so much over the years and they've been such a great support system for my family that now I can generate that, gener that uh, I guess, my, that gratitude for that into a passion to really help other people and, and find that same type of support. And Katie, as we wrap things up here today, where can someone go to find out more information about uh, patient services and what you have to offer? So um, the best place to go, as I've mentioned several times, is our 1-800 number, which is 1-800-227-2345, or you can go to cancer.org. And where can they find out more about uh, not only the relays that you're part of, but the big relay in downtown St. Louis? Um, again, you could call our 1-800 number or please visit relayforlife.org. And last question is, open floor for you for about 30 seconds. What do you say to people to get them off that couch and get out to a relay? I think cancer has touched everybody there i've never met a person where they don't know somebody who's had cancer and the american cancer society funds research for every type of cancer not just one particular one so if you've been touched by cancer if you want to make a difference please come you will not be the same person when you leave and we just thank everybody for their support and ray um, I to echo what Katie said, certainly it is a life-changing experience and you do, you make friends for life because you go into a relay and whether you're a survivor, whether you're a son or a daughter of a parent that has been fighting or a sibling or any, in any capacity, if you're at all related to cancer, um, you certainly will find people that are in your same boat. And whether you are very vocal about your survivorship or not, um, as a survivor, um, you will go into it and you will feel like you have a family that you never knew that you had before. So I certainly, again, get off the couch and go to a relay. Well, Ray, <laughs> Katie, we appreciate your time so much here on the show and thank you for everything you guys do for the community. Thank and you. we'll thank see you at the much. events. Absolutely. Yay. All right, thanks for watching tonight here on News 20 on GTN. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow. After a car accident, Linda Davis needed CPR. Bill Hamilton needed temporary shelter when a fire destroyed his home. During an operation, Haley Reynolds needed a blood transfusion.
Thank you for giving me blood. Thank you for giving me shelter. Thank you for saving my life. Support the Red Cross and change a life, starting with your own.